our last game for this episode is Bugs Bunny in Rabbit Ran. I think there's an in there, right? I don't know. Bugs Bunny in Rabbit Rampage. Um, it should be because that's very much like a cartoon. Like a that's the title, and it presents the game yeah. like it's a cartoon right. rampage. So yeah. this was nominated by Cleveland Gamer on iTunes, which makes me really want to say Cleveland Steamer, but I know I shouldn't. <laughs> Um, How appropriate. This game was either nominated to punish us or because Mr. Cleveland had this game when they were younger um, and would have been like, this was a fun game, I guess. I'm going to nominate well, this. Let me put it this way. Mr. Cleveland Gamer gave us or Mrs. Cleveland Gamer. I'm, we don't yeah. know. Yes, yeah. we're sexist. Uh, but it gave us this five star review on iTunes and nominated Bugs Bunny in Rabbit Rampage for the Super Nintendo in that five-star review, which means we had to do it A-S-A-P. And that's what we're doing. I want to say that uh, it was, uh, first of all, it was it was developed by Viacom New Media, those purveyors of quality, <laughs> and published by Sunsoft, who were literal purveyors of quality up until the 16-bit era. I don't um, know what happened to them by then. Like, I'm really curious, because everyone loved them in the NES peer, and then and then Air the Acrobat happened, and uh, it just kind of went downhill from there. I don't know either. All I can say is uh, I long for the days of Uncle Fester's quest, and I so, wish... <laughs> so I want to get that for, like, a, a small rant, I guess. This is a Looney Tunes game, and for whatever reason, there haven't, hasn't been really what I would call a great Looney Tunes game. Certainly not anything on the level of the Capcom Disney licensing thing they did. Right. I so, I mean, this came out, uh, it was published originally in February 1994 in North America. And the immediate comparison, I think, Bob, is what you, what you were gonna, about to say is like the immediate comparison would be Mickey Mania, which was, I think, developed by well, Sony Image Saw. It was a lot more quality than, than this. Very, one. very good. Yeah. For, for what it was, it was very good. Or even something this, like. There's never been a Looney Tunes game as good as, say, DuckTales or the Magical Quest series. It's just... No. There's been games that you could consider good, playable, like Crazy Castle, but never great. The best you can get, I think, might be Bugs Bunny Birthday Blowout for the NES. Were you just trying um, to sell, like, a Bugs Bunny Birthday Blowout? Like, that was kind of... Look, I'm doing the best I can. I love Come on Bugs down Bunny. here to Bugs That's Bunny Birthday Blowout. Said. Look, it's a sale. I mean, here's the the everything thing. must go. All the Looney everything Tunes must, must go. Leave. <laughs> um, I think the problem with Looney Tunes games is that, like, the way the characters work compared to some of the other characters. Well, I know, like, yes, they don't usually get as good dev teams, historically speaking. But it's also kind of like all of the Looney Tunes characters exist in this kind of, like, godlike state where, like, they're just kind of like super magical creatures that everything that they do works or doesn't work, which de doesn't fit a game. You know, like no. when you come when you approach like DuckTales or some sort of like thing, you know, it's like right. they're more normal, like stuff right. just happens to them. There's a struggle. Where, right? There's there's the, the good guys and the bad guys and the good guys struggle against the bad guys. Whereas Looney Tunes, like the cartoons are especially early on, it was like a sociopathic animal like struggles against <laughs> like like a well-meaning bumbling hunter. And that, yeah. that's what they did. And that's or, the first level like, game, too. Which is great. Actually, this game is uh, pretty much duck amok, only your bugs instead of Daffy. What a twist! Which Spoilers, is uh, the, the, a bad uh, idea, because Daffy can handle that, bugs cannot. Well, it depends on which version of Daffy you're talking about. Let me, let me put it this way. Like, this... Okay, so it is the Mickey Mania of Warner Brothers games. Uh, Looney Tunes cartoon-based games. But the problem is, is it's not as well made a game. But I do want to point out that whereas everybody's all about, oh, the history of Mickey Mouse, like, oh, there's so much history there. Let's let's really explore like the illustrious history of Mickey Mouse. There's there's uh, Steamboat Willie and and uh, playing crazy, which is never recognized, but technically happened. And, you know, and it goes on like there's the band concert with like the, the you know, the color Mickey Mouse card. And then there's uh, Fantasia, the Sorcerer's Apprentice, which is where Mickey became a Caucasian and never went back. And all this other weird stuff. And they can make a game out of that. But with Bugs Bunny, it was a bit more rough and tumble of a character on one hand. But also, it doesn't have the same kind of cultural cachet. Like, 
I, I think that people really love Bugs Bunny in at least North America because of Bugs Bunny was a great way to fill up time on cable television and Saturday morning television and stuff like that. But I don't know that people today still care the same way. No, I they keep trying say, to reboot Bugs Bunny and it never really sticks. So I've got to no, say that uh, yeah, Space Jam it, didn't do much problem. wonders for the WB. Well, Space Jam made no, no, that's not true. Like, I don't like that movie, but that movie made a ton <laughs> it of did, money. Mark Chilly alone basically built his career yeah, on Space Jam. No, you're right. I, I'm getting off so many the- sexual yeah. assault lawsuits that wouldn't exist uh, if it weren't for Space Jam. So let's be yeah. fair but, to Space okay, Jam. Okay, so I mean, like, but, yeah, like this, this game, game has a lot of Looney Tunes fan service in it, and that's it's what got it is. Some- great production values yeah. it's the sprites it's really are huge bad. there's a lot of digitized speech yeah. that's pretty cool who, who remembers it look who remembers nasty canasta because he's one of the bosses i do <laughs> yeah, i do me too. That, that there just... are exactly three cartoons where <laughs> nasty canasta goes up against uh i think there are two no no there's one cartoon where it's nasty canasta versus daffy duck and there are two uh, Nasty Canasta versus uh, Bugs Bunny, or maybe I'm getting that backwards. But anyway, the idea that that character is even in a game is impressive to me because exactly. I is, mean, it was definitely it, either they got tapes or they were just definitely fans of Bugs Bunny on the development team. There's no, think, there's no question that this wasn't just shipped bit. off to some random like. Like, it wasn't shipped off to a Japanese studio who were told, you've got Bugs Bunny, oh. and they made up a bunch of characters. It, no, it's it all... off to Viacom New Media, which I believe would have owned Looney Tunes at this point. So they, they all the non-public domain Looney Tunes. They had, like, a lot of uh, a lot of stuff going on. I think, unfortunately, um, because they had these, you know, the production values are quite good. It's, I would say it's kind of expected for a 94 SNES game. You know, it'll either look really solid like this, or it'll kind of just be cheap garbage. Like those are kind of well, like they're two extremes. Let me, let, me, let me put it this way: like before we before we move on, because I, I know where you're going to go, and you're and you're going in the right direction. But I do want to say, like, yeah, sure. They could have made a Bugs Bunny game, and there have been Bugs Bunny games that were way less referential to the source than this was. I mean, this one starts out your first enemy. Granted, there's like a billion of them, <laughs> but um. Your first enemy is a dog that is the dog that uh, it's Elmer the dog. Fudd has I mean, look, if maybe, you, if he, in maybe three cartoons tops. He's, like, um, he's very recognizable. He's he's the Looney Tunes Bugs hunting dog. He shows up. Yeah, compared but to the crazy more than cast. One Bugs hunting dog. I'm just pointing this out. Like, there's more than one. And uh, one, it is a pretty big improvement compared to, say, Crazy Castle, where you, like, fight Sylvester. Because Bugs has never, ever fought Sylvester. <laughs> Ever. Uh, the, 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 so this the, is this is Bugs versus things that he fights. You know, it's not Bugs versus the Looney Tunes cast, which is nice. Um, right. That's that's birthday sh- blowout. That's like it's like a Bugs Bunny game that has other Looney Tunes characters in it that are kind of related to the actual cartoons, which is the one thing that sets it apart from Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle. Um, but yeah, no, which, this one, yeah. I would say like you know, if you had have booted this up, you know, when it came out, you would have been like, wow. That's I recognize the background looks very Looney Tunes. It looks like, yes. you know, the poor, like, you know, the, the the nice backgrounds that they had in the cartoons. And the characters. It's got like, you know, like in the first level, you've got like the, the two different uh, the Warner Brothers, like uh, Airsats, uh, Chip and Dale, like yeah. QB and Birdie are in the game and they're everywhere. But, you know, well, they, they, them, like, they've they, had they, a compromise. They, they had to have enemies. Yeah. So they made them. Them. And they did a good. They did a good job. Yeah, th- this game really does nail the aesthetics of Looney Tunes down pat. But it sure is a There's game. There's <laughs> some grievances I have with this game, mostly because the sprites are very well done. They're pretty huge, but that's a problem. Like mm-hmm. Bugs is a huge target. And there's like projectiles much on the screen at all times. They like, typically homing in on you, so. Well, I mean, the sprites aren't that much bigger than, say, uh, Mickey Mouse in Magical Castle or Mickey Mouse. Castle in, of what's that? Castle of Illusion. Yes, but the They're game the is size, this game is not designed in the same way. This game not even constantly, close. constantly is like jump that way. I don't know what's over there. You're, yeah, <laughs> go through this wall because I don't know. Just Jump down do into this cave, and then you'll be murdered by a bunch of dogs, because that's Here's this the game. First level, there are 
two enemies. Uh, they are dog and slightly more brown dog. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, it's just... a red dog, too, isn't there? He's hiding oh, around. Oh, yeah. I mean, then you got like the chipmunks that I mentioned. But the point is you like the way you fight these uh, enemies is really frustrating. You've got the pies, which uh, is a good you know, I mean, it's, you've got it's, a it's, pie and a kick, and they're both like pretty much identical. So I don't right. know why you need. I, I you believe you can't just like pie the dog and he disappears. It's like you pie the dog, and then you got to pie him again, and then he disappears. If you keep mashing the pie button, he'll block, and it looks really nice because it's got a good little yes. bit of animation. But it it's nice. yeah. Uh, can you Mario it's jump on not. some enemies also? But like, not it all feels kind of, but can, not really. But I tried to repeat uh, it. Geez. Like sometimes, like I could I said, jump on them. And sometimes I couldn't. I'm like, I don't know. I just play Castle of Illusion and you've got a much better idea of what you should do with this. Like Castle of Illusion is, has projectiles, but they're limited. So you have to kind of think about it. But then you can also jump on the enemies. And a lot of the game is built around jumping off of enemies, bouncing, moving up to different platforms, finding different ways through stages. But you do things. get all the weapons in this. That's one big part of this game. The levels are... There's the dynamite. There's like the dog bones. There's the way you can save your progress by putting down the bugs was here. That's another thing. That's a bad idea to have to place your own checkpoints. <laughs> it yeah. it kind of is. Uh, but I respect them for thinking about it yeah i also i don't um, wait have to do that but whatever yes tango i i also want to say um the level structure while not quite as badly sort of hinges on what i like to call amiga platformer syndrome they're just kind of boring and monotonous and uh like you know maybe not as unfocused but like it just seems like there's not a lot of variety in the levels and you just kind of have to it's true keep pushing forward wizards and i would call it wizards and warriors level design that's okay. what i would compare I, it I can to go for most that. of all <laughs> it's not quite as bad as home improvement level design which is its own <laughs> jesus christ that well cuz be... these are not labyrinthian levels they're just yeah. kind of like big open spaces that you hey, jump around. go like hey yeah. try to jump through that wall maybe it'll work maybe it won't just you kinda, don't know they're just kind of dull overall and uh, like, like like when they try to do more i that doesn't always work like the bull fighting level was like f alternatively <laughs> boring and frustrating well like very quickly they start to introduce like here's a pit that you fall in and die instantly i hope you didn't accidentally jump into it because it's just <laughs> going to be there you can't see it because you're way higher up and you'll just fall it's like, yeah. what? It was a very home improvement, earthworm gym type thing. But, I mean, here, here before we rank it, I just want to say, like, I do want to give this game credit for at least they cared. Yeah. At least they cared. They respected well, the source material. They couldn't make a good game, but bless their hearts, they tried. My, my feelings did, on this game did. was that they wanted to make, and this is like, I think they got it. They, they wanted to make a Bugs Bunny simulator. You know, they thought, what does Bugs Bunny do? He has, like, goofy things that he does and then he affects things like he kills things or whatever they get knocked out and that's kind of like that's what he does so we'll make that into a game but somewhere along the way they were like oh but you have to make it a crappy platformer and it's like <laughs> okay that that messed it all up because maybe a there... platformer just isn't the right genre for lindoon's game is that it what, what do you that's that's what i was going to ask uh, Bob is like, what do you do with Bugs Bunny if you're going to make a game? Like the single best Warner Brothers animation uh, game is probably Treasure's uh, Looney Tunes, or no, I'm sorry, Tiny Tunes game for the GBA. It's probably the best one well, that was the ever. The Tiny played. Tunes in general had much better, or at least more playable games. Yeah, like, they're, they're the pretty. Was, yeah, Kana was Konami a... handled a fair slice of them too, so uh, that was actually pretty quality. That's a right. thing. I they mean, had actual real talent with those yeah this game I mean, kind of doesn't okay so you got like buster bust loose is that what you're talking about like, yeah I would say, that one and, good, the, but... and the nes uh tiny tunes also a good game pretty tough that was pretty and good. the one in the genesis True. is pretty good too buster's hidden treasure that is pretty good yeah okay uh -huh. good good point tiny tunes so games were not bad treasure i still think make the best uh warner brothers animation game more. definitely it's really good. Have you played uh, Astro Boy? The oh, Treasure yeah, Astro no, Boy? Uh, yeah, I, I did that recently. It's exactly the same. Oh, sweet. Oh, that's good. Endorsement. But it is because these these games, again, like the Tiny Toons cast are, they're not omnipotent super creatures like True. the Looney Tunes cast. They, again, they kind of actually bad things well, happen to them. Not, yeah, not I mean, as much. Yes, uh, yeah, well, yeah, okay. So, like, 
you got to understand, like, there are different versions of Bugs Bunny. Like, yes, definitely. There's the Chuck Jones Bugs Bunny that's like an omnipotent, like, super snarky, like, god among rabbits, you know? But there's also, like, different earlier versions of Bugs Bunny that weren't quite the same. And it, but, it, but, you know, like, um, if, if you look at something like, and, you know, we did talk briefly about Disney, you know, like, um, you know, there are, like, Disney cartoons where it's like, uh, like, like, Mickey... And and Donald have to move a chest of drawers into an apartment. Like that's the whole episode or whole cartoon. You can't right. see Bugs Bunny doing that. Like he doesn't. He'd just be like, "Oh, it's already there," because that's right. I mean, the that's problem how they is function. like with these classic uh, American cartoons. Like the best you can do is probably uh, Popeye. Like that's that's the that's the one that's best suited to. <laughs> Popeye make, make hasn't game. really been known for being a lot of great games either. You know, like he but could, the, he could the be Nintendo's, in a good game quite readily. Like, you just have to Miyamoto like arcade Popeye is really, really damn good. It's fun he, one, we don't remember it very well because they can't make it again. They can't reproduce it. They can't put it on virtual console. It's gone. But it is a very, very good game. And um, it is very uh, well suited to its source material. But yeah, after that, like, yeah, there's not there's no good Popeye games and it sucks, but Popeye is the ultimate. Like if you were going to make like, I'm going to make a classic, you know, 1930s cartoon character game, video game, you would do Popeye. It's just like, nobody wants to touch it now because it's not popular anymore. But I do want to say, I all I want to say is about, about rabbit rampage is it, it looks really good. Uh, it's not a good game, but it looks really beautiful. And the people who made it cared about what they did. And I want to give them credit for making a gorgeous uh, uh, SNES tribute to, you know, theatrical cartoon shorts of the 1940s. I mean, it's it's very clear where, um, you know, what they wanted to do with the game is pretty clear. They wanted to make a pretty referential thing to uh, Warner Brothers and, and Bugs Bunny more specifically. That was what they wanted to do. They just couldn't get a good game out of it at the same time. I agree. Uh, Where do we want to put? Like, I'm 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 thinking like uh, below. I'm thinking it's like in the Yoshi range. Like, I do I do want to give it props. It, they at least made it look gorgeous, and it does. And the and the enemies aren't generic enemies, and they could have been. I mean, look, you, you've got the Yoshi range. I'm willing to give it a tiny bit, tiny, tiny bit more credit. Like, in the sense that I think this game's got shoots a lot higher than Lost Battle. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna put it like right below King's Quest Five. Satenga, what do you think? Uh, I was thinking of placing even slightly higher than Bob's suggestion, but we don't want to give too much credit because fundamentally the game itself still is here's, pretty mediocre. Here's my re my yeah. reasoning is that like King's Quest V, they're both games that are really nice to look at. They have great production values, but the actual games really are not great to play. 100% true. I mean, yeah. so the question yeah. is, just like compared to Friday the 13th, um... I mean, I will say, like, Friday the 13th doesn't... It tries its best to actually work with its source material. It doesn't... And it does, yeah, it does take the concept of the movies and turn it into a game-like concept that that is has replay value. So, Not you know, like, great, I think but, you know. they did, they did like, they put a lot of effort... Because it's a Commodore 64 game. They can't, they can't make it sparkles, <laughs> like, as, nearly as much as an SNES game. I don't right. think it's... The Friday the 13th is that close to the movies, given that... You don't actually fight the actual Jason in that one. But, but... What do you... I mean... Well, well it's you didn't fight Jason in the first Friday the 13th also, so. <laughs> I mean, like, it's definitely based on the first movie, which I think was kind of a bit more um, vague about... Like, Jason wasn't Jason until the, the third movie. Keep that in mind. Yeah, like, he, good point. He, he was Jason in the second movie, but it wasn't the same. He was just kind of like a weirdo that lived in a cabin. No, he had the bag. Oh. He, he got the iconic hockey mask halfway into three, so that was more or less the official turning point. I mean, ultimately, I personally, uh, because, like, I, this game is a great game to look at. You can look at a couple of screenshots. You can look at a little video, uh, but I, I wouldn't play it. I would probably rather at least play Friday the 13th because it has, like, the, the gameplay is kind of a little bit more there. It's like, oh, you run up and smack people and you try and make sure people don't get killed. They got a coercive game going. This game didn't have a coercive game going. They, they fumbled a lot on the actual game component, which I think is a big shame for it. So I personally would put Friday the 13th above it, but that's that's what what are you guys? I think Xerxes is the one who has to... I, I, I agree. 
I agree with you, Cal. Okay, so huh. between Friday the 13th and the last battle then, final offer? Done. Thank you.